Hello and welcome to Ecocentric. I'm your host, Jake Zaleski. We've got a lot of environmental news to cover this week, so let's get started. Also, we're, we're just going to skip the fact that we haven't uploaded a news video in over a month. Yeah, but let's just go to the news. Our first story is a good one about renewable energy in the United States. The amount of renewable energy in the United States has doubled since 2008 from 382 million megawatt hours to 742 million megawatt hours. Renewable energy now accounts for 17.6% of energy usage. Renewable energy has been growing rapidly in this country, but it still represents a tiny percentage of our energy. By contrast, Australia, which has roughly the same energy makeup and a similar culture, economy, and political system, is set to reach 50% by 2025. With every action comes an equal and opposite reaction. Unfortunately, the EU has pushed back its time frame for establishing a carbon emissions goal by 2050, a key provision of the Paris Climate Accords. EU leaders made the controversial decision to postpone the agreement after some member nations refused to comply with proposed carbon emissions targets. Activists and more progressive EU leaders are frustrated with the relative standstill on climate policy since 2016. Emmanuel Macron, a leading voice for emissions reform in the EU, referenced the ongoing student protest and expressed disappointment in the EU's failure to make any real progress on tackling climate change. Limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius before 2100, an increasingly lofty goal put forth in 2016, will only become more difficult as long as EU officials continue to shy away from ambitious action. Next up, we come back to the United States. After some debate and uncertainty, the governor of New Mexico has signed into law legislation that sets the state on track to 100% renewable energy by 2050. This puts New Mexico in the category of only three states that have plans to completely phase out fossil fuels. Hopefully many others will follow. Now we have some unfortunate but expected news. A new study has found that fossil fuel companies devote millions of dollars annually to lobbying against private climate policies. I know, shocker. Influence Map estimated spending to be around $200 million per year, but undisclosed financial records can make that number significantly higher. Oil and gas companies are not keen on revealing the extent to which they have lobbied against climate causes. These companies aim to block and push back regulations that can hurt their profits. Suspicion that the fossil fuel lobbies the fossil fuel lobby exerts a tremendous influence on environmental policy is not new, but only now has the magnitude of this influence been released. Next up, we have a story about coal. Emissions from coal plants reached an all-time high in 2018, despite new climate protections. Since the Paris Agreement was signed in 2016, countries and companies around the world have been introducing broad and ambitious measures to curb emissions. However, the energy demands have only risen since then, and the growth of global the, and the growth of the global carbon footprint has hardly changed since 2016. Consistently high efficiency and availability of fossil fuels can be blamed for this continued increase. Renewable energy sources are not growing quickly enough to satisfy our energy demands. Asian plants, whose emissions plants have reached record highs at over 10 billion tons, are particularly to blame for the continued growth of the fossil fuel industry. The commonly cited goal of keeping global warming below 1.5 degrees Celsius will no longer be possible if these trends continue. Speaking of rising emissions and fossil fuel lobbyists, the United States Senate voted against the Green New Deal last Tuesday. The vote was 0 to 57, with many Democratic senators, with many Democratic senators voting present and some even voting no. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell forced a vote on the Green New Deal in an attempt to kill all future proposals of it, and the effort only partially worked. The bill was easily struck down, but many Democratic senators voted present to show their support. No senator voted yes. Go back over to the polluted pond to Britain. Brexit could spell disaster for the EU and global efforts to combat climate change. Whether or not the UK will choose to continue to take part in the EU's Emissions Trading System, or ETS, is unclear, as several different plans that address Brexit are in the works, including plans to admit Article 50 altogether. Much of Britain's recent climate action has either been has either used the EU as a launch vehicle or has been largely conceived by the EU. Brexit is characterized by uncertainty, and nobody can guarantee that the UK will continue to enforce EU regulations and programs it may not have initially supported. Others worry that British attempts at preserving EU policy while coming up with new national programs will yield a watered-down version of the ETS. Regardless of decisions, 
regarding existing programs, the EU will lose much of its legitimacy and influence in environmental action if one of its most important member states chooses to leave. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. You can also follow us on Instagram at WeAreEcocentric. Well, that's all for me, and now it's your turn to save the world. See you next week. Our first story is a good one about renewable energy in the United States. The amount of renewable energy in the United States has doubled from since 2008. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Ecocentric. I'm your host, Jake Zuleski. We've got a vlog. We've got a... <laughs> also, we're just going to skip the fact that we haven't uploaded a video in over a month. Wait, that's not true. Hello and welcome to Ecocentric. I'm your host, Jake Zuleski. We've got a lot. We've got a... It's been a while. Hello and welcome to Ecocentric. I'm your host, Jake Zuleski. We've got a lot. <laughs>